Doing science is a very satisfying way to spend one's career. Pick a problem that is really important and try to tackle it in a very, very serious way. Don't do a trivial problem. It's better to make small progress on something really, really important than to push a trivial issue further ahead. My scientific questions often come from things that I have personal interest in. I went to Harvard and majored in history literature because I wanted to understand what happened to me in Vienna, 1938, when Hitler marched in. I wanted to see how you know, civilized people could become so brutal and anti-Semitic. While I was writing my dissertation, I met a famous psychoanalyst. And he said to me, if you want to understand motivation, if you want to understand what happened to you, you're not going to do it through history and literature. You know, you've got to really study the mind. You've got to study why people do things. You've got to study psychoanalysis. I had no science background whatsoever. I took physics, I took organic chemistry, took the courses necessary for medical school. And I went to medical school uh, with the idea of becoming a psychoanalyst. I came along at a very good time when neuroscience and psychology, which were worlds apart, was beginning to come together. I was one of many people that contributed to that. There were people before me that already started the way. Uh, but I took advantage of the fact that this was a new direction that was opening up. And there were certain experimental systems that were particularly conducive to that. And many neuroscientists of my generation were scared to work on behavior because they thought it was too complicated. And I, being a psychiatrist, that didn't bother me in the slightest. Uh, so I learned how to study behavior and worked out a simple reflex that I could study and see what happens when an animal learns something. And I found that what happens is that the strength of synaptic connections changes. The nerve cells communicate with each other at specific sites called synapses. And these synapses are changed by learning. With certain kinds of learning, the synapses get stronger. With other kinds of learning, they get weaker. Well, I think working out the first cellular mechanisms of learning and memory is not so bad. And I'm quite proud of the fact that I did this. Way beyond that now, the field, which is very small when I came into it, is now gigantic. I mean, many people working on the brain, different aspects of behavior and making very good progress. I mean, the brain is unbelievably complicated. We've got you know, decades and decades of work ahead of us, but very good progress is being made.